What is going on guys? In today's video, I will show you the top 3 best staff builds in Throne and Liberty. So at the start, I will give you a quick overview of each build, then I will explain what skills and upgrades should you focus on. Then as well, we'll see what is the best gear and how to get it. And then finally, we will go over the weapon masteries, stats, your skill rotations, and even what guardian should you use, so we would be able to get the highest damage possible and much more. So for the first build, we have the Staff and Dagger. This setup is a powerful mage assassin that has insane amount of high single target burst damage. Our main playstyle will revolve around maintaining 10 burning stacks and 20 thundercloud stacks, which will provide exceptional AoE and single target DPS. Due to the high cooldowns in this build, you need plenty of cooldown speed for this playstyle to work, but if you follow instructions and build it right, you'll become unstoppable. So let's take a look at our setup. And first off, we have our skills. So for defensive skill, we use the Block Blade, while for active skills, we get Serial Firebombs, Inferno Wave, Fireball Barrage, Infernal Meteor, Inject Venom, High Focus, Cleaving Moonlight, Judgment Lightning, Ice Spear, Ankle Strike, Brutal Incision, and Inner Peace. Because of our specialization setup, we'll have Serial Firebombs turn into Focused Firebombs, then Infernal Meteor will turn into Hellfire Raid, Inject Venom will turn into Lightning Infusion, Ice Spear will turn into Ice Spear Bombardment, and finally, Brutal Incision will turn into Thunderclouds Bombing. And then for passive skills, we get the Assassin's Instincts, Destructive Fang, Wrathful Edge, Assassinism, Mana Amp, Flame Condensation, Forbidden Sanctuary, and Murderous Energy. Next we have Skill Specialization, and for Serial Firebombs, we select the Focus Firebombs and Mobility. Then for Fireball Barrage, get the Fireball Frenzy. Then for Inject Venom, select Lightning Infusion and Cooldown Reduction. Then for Cleaving Moonlight, get Consecutive Use and Attack Speed Increase. Then for Ice Spear, get the Ice Spear Bombardment and Damage Increase. For Brutal Incision, select Thunderclouds Bombing and Cooldown Reduction. For Inferno Wave, get Cooldown, Consecutive Use and Burning. Then for Infernal Meteor, get the Hellfire Rain. For High Focus, get the Base Damage Boost. For Judgment Lightning and Inner Peace, don't select anything. And finally for Ankle Strike, get the Offhand Weapon Activation. Next we have Weapon Mastery, and this is how it should look like for the staff. So get the middle first, and then the entire bottom row. And this is how it should look like for the dagger, so pretty much the same thing. Get the middle first, then the whole bottom row. Next, let's take a look at our gear, and all of this you can easily farm yourself. If you're interested in how to get these items and the full build guide, then click the link in the description to watch my dedicated video on this setup. So first off, we are using the Tublex Shattering Quarterstaff with traits like Hit Chance, Heavy Attack Chance, and Critical Hit Chance. Next we have Liquirus's Wicked Thorns with Hit Chance, Heavy Attack Chance, and Critical Hit Chance. Next we have Decorated Champion Crown with Mana Regen, Melee Evasion, and Cooldown Speed. Next we have Supreme Devotion with Mana Regen, Skill Damage Resistance, and Debuff Duration. Next we have Plate of the Field General with Melee Evasion, Ranged Evasion, and Buff Duration. Next we have Alacritus Invoker Gloves with Magic Evasion, Melee Evasion, and Added Attack Speed. Next we have Alacritus Invoker Pants with Mana Regen, Magic Evasion, and Melee Evasion. Next we have Sabatons of the Field General with Melee Evasion, Ranged Evasion, and Movement Speed. Next up we have Clasp of the Conqueror with Max Health, Skill Damage Boost, and Buff Duration. Next we have Ancient Sarodama Braces with Mana Regen, Skill Damage Resistance, and Debuff Duration. Next we have Violent Signet with Max Health, Skill Damage Boost, and Buff Duration. Next we have Amber Dimensional Band with Max Health, Skill Damage Boost, and Buff Duration. And finally we have Belt of Meditation with Max Health and Skill Damage Resistance. Next up we have the stats, and at the end game we want to get 50 dexterity and 40 perception and then put the rest of your leftover points into wisdom. Next we have our guardian choice, and we have two best options. The first one is Lady Knight Kamarshia. If you consistently find yourself needing more defense then go with her. Or if you want to get more DPS then use the Shade Revenant Steno. This guardian has the highest damage in the game, as it can launch projectiles every second that can crit and heavy attack. And finally we have come to the gameplay. So the highest damage rotation is to use Lightning Infusion, then High Focus, then Hellfire Rain, then Focused Firebombs, then Inferno Wave, then Ankle Strike, then Cleaving Moonlight, then Thunderclouds Bombing, and now finish it off with the Fireball Barrage. If you want a more in-depth look into this build where I explain every single detail, then click the link in the description to watch my dedicated Staff and Daggers video. 
So for the second build, we have Staff and Longbow. This setup is a glass cannon that deals huge amount of damage from long range by maximizing our passives and items. You will need to manage your cooldowns effectively, but if you follow the instructions, then we will be melting anyone that stands in our way. So let's take a look at our setup. And first off, we have our skills. So for defensive skill, we use Overtaker, while for active skills, I've chosen to go with Serial Firebombs, Judgment Lightning, Ice Spear, Infernal Meteor, Nature's Blessing, Inner Peace, Zephyr's Knock, Strafing, Deadly Marker, Ensnaring Arrow, Decisive Sniping, and High Focus. Because of specialization skills, we'll have Serial Firebombs turn into Defocused Firebombs, then Ice Spear will turn into the Ice Spear Bombardment, and Infernal Meteor will turn into the Hellfire Rain. Then for passive skills, we get Rapid Fire Stance, Steady Aim, Sniper's Sense, Assassinism, Mana Amp, Flame Condensation, Forbidden Sanctuary, and Roxy's Arrowhead. Next, we have Skill Specialization, and for Serial Firebombs, we get the Focused Firebombs, Mobility, and Projectile Speed Increased. Then for Ice Spear, select the Ice Spear Bombardment and Damage Increase. Then for Nature's Blessing, get the Whirlpool. Then for Zephyr's Knock, get the Damage Increase and Cooldown. Then for Deadly Marker, get the Bullseye. Then for Decisive Sniping, get everything besides Decisive Bombardment. Then for Judgment Lightning, don't select anything. Then for Infernal Meteor, get the Hellfire Rain and Cooldown. Then for Inner Peace, again, don't select anything. Then for Strafing, get the Gale and Consecutive Use. Then for Ensnaring Arrow, get the Hit Chance. And finally for High Focus, get the Base Damage Boost. Next, we have Weapon Mastery, and this is how it should look like for the Longbow. So get the middle first and then the whole bottom row. And then again, this is how it should look like for the staff. So pretty much the same thing. Get the middle and then the bottom row. Next, let's take a look at our gear. And all of this you can easily farm yourself. If you're interested in how to get these items and the full build guide, then click the link in the description to watch my dedicated video on this setup. So first off, we're using the Carnixus Netherbow with hit chance, heavy attack chance, and critical hit chance. Next, we have Tublex Shattering Quarter Staff with heavy attack chance, critical hit chance, and hit chance. Next, we have Feather Drake Skin Mask with ranged evasion, magic evasion, and max health. Next, we have Supreme Devotion Cloak with mana regen, skill damage resistance, and debuff duration. Next, we have Swirling Essence Robe with buff duration, mana regen, and melee evasion. Next, we have Gloomguard Gauntlets with added attack speed, mana regen, and melee evasion. Next, we have Ruthless Enforcer Leggings with mana regen, melee evasion, and ranged evasion. Next, we have Soul Mirror Boots with movement speed, ranged evasion, and magic evasion. Next, we have Ecliptic Pendant with skill damage boost, buff duration, and mana regen. Next up, we have Ancient Sarodama Braces with skill damage resistance, mana regen, and debuff duration. Next, we have Valent Signet with buff duration, skill damage boost, and max health. Next, we have Sapphire Dimensional Band with buff duration, skill damage boost, and max health. And finally, we have Belt of the Midnight Hunt with skill damage resistance, mana regen, and debuff duration. Next up, we have the stats. And at the end game, we want to get 50 strength and 40 perception, and then put the rest of your leftover points into dexterity. Next, we have our Guardian choice, and the best one is the Lady Knight Kamarshia. If you consistently find yourself running out of mana, then she's the one for you. And finally, we have come to the gameplay. So the highest damage rotation is to use High Focus, then Hellfire Rain, then Nature's Blessing, then Ensnaring Arrow, then Decisive Sniping, then Deadly Marker, then Focused Firebombs, then Ice Spear Bombardment, and then we finish it off with Judgment Lightning. And from here, we rinse and repeat. Also, if you ever run into mana problem, then just use the Nature's Blessing and Inner Peace skills. And this will give you mana sustain, but it is optional. Like I mentioned at the start, if you want a more in-depth look into this build, then feel free to watch my dedicated Staff and Bow video. And for the last build, we have Staff and Wand. This is the most versatile healer setup in the game because you can heal while also doing great amount of DPS. As our weapon combination has stronger and more spammable AoE abilities than any other healer combo, so this makes her preferred when farming in the open world and dungeons. If you enjoy traditional mage DPS builds but also want to heal and support allies, then this is the one for you. So let's take a look at our setup. And first off, we have our skills. So for defensive skill, we use Chaotic Shield. While for active skills, we get Touch of Despair, Serial Firebombs, Time for Punishment, Chain Lightning, Curse Explosion, Swift Healing, Corrupted Magic Circle, Inferno Wave, Judgment Lightning, High Focus, Inner Peace, and Karmic Haze. Because of specialization skills, we'll have Corrupted Magic Circle turn into the Decaying Touch. 
Next, we have Skill Specialization, and for Touch of Despair, get Radius Increased, Effect Duration, and Curse. Next, we have Time for Punishment, and we don't select anything. Then for Curse Explosion, we get Damage Increase. Then for Corrupted Magic Circle, get Decaying Touch and additional damage. Then for Judgment Lightning, select Consecutive Use and both damage transfers. Next, we have Inner Peace, and we don't want to select anything. Then for Serial Firebombs, get Mobility, Radius Increase, and Instant Casting. Then for Chain Lightning, get both damage transfers. For Swift Healing, get Consecutive Use. For Inferno Wave, get Cooldown and Consecutive Use. Then for High Focus, select Base Damage Boost. And finally, for Karmic Haze, get Radius Increase and additional damage. Next, we have Weapon Mastery. And this is how it should look like for the Wand. So get the middle first, then the whole top row. And then again, this is how it should look like for the Staff. So pretty much the same thing. Get the middle and then the bottom row. Next, let's take a look at our gear. And all of this you can easily farm yourself. If you are interested in how to get these items and the full build guide, then click the link in description to watch my dedicated video on this setup. So first off, we are using Laquirus's Coveted Tome, with traits like Hit Chance, Heavy Attack Chance, and Critical Hit Chance. Next we have Tublex Shattering Quarterstaff, with traits like Hit Chance, Heavy Attack Chance, and Critical Hit Chance. Next we have Visor of the Infernal Herald, with Melee Evasion, Ranged Evasion, and Max Health. Next we have Supreme Devotion with Mana Region, Skill Damage Resistance, and Debuff Duration. Next we have Swirling Essence Robe with Magic Evasion, Melee Evasion, and Buff Duration. Next we have Gloomguard Gauntlets with Melee Evasion, Ranged Evasion, and Added Attack Speed. Next we have Breaches of the Executioner with Ranged Evasion, Magic Evasion, and Debuff Duration. Next we have Swirling Essence Shoes with Magic Evasion, Melee Evasion, and Max Health. Next up, we have Collar of Decimation with Max Health, Skill Damage Boost, and Buff Duration. Next, we have the Ancient Sarodama Braces with Mana Region, Skill Damage Resistance, and Buff Duration. Next, we have Etched Alabaster Band with Max Health, Skill Damage Boost, and Buff Duration. Next, we have Sapphire Dimensional Band with Max Health, Skill Damage Boost, and Buff Duration. And finally, we have Belt of Endless Slaughter with Max Health, Skill Damage Resistance, and Debuff Duration. Next up, we have the stats, and at the end game, we want to get 50 strength and 50 wisdom, and then put the rest of your leftover points into dexterity. Next, we have our guardian choice, and we have two best options. The first one is Lady Knight Kamarshia. If you consistently find yourself needing more defense, then go with her. Or perhaps, if you want more DPS, then use the Shade Revenant Steno. This guardian has the highest damage in the game, as he can launch projectiles every second that can crit and heavy attack. And now finally, we have come to the gameplay. And as this build is very versatile, I will give you multiple rotations. So the highest damage rotation is to use Touch of Despair, then Decaying Touch, then Serial Firebombs, then Touch of Despair again, and now finally use the Curse Explosion. Then next, we have a long DPS rotation for maximum damage. So start by using High Focus, then Time for Punishment, then Touch of Despair, then Serial Firebombs, then Inferno Wave, then Decaying Touch, then Touch of Despair again, and now we finish it off with the Curse Explosion. And now finally for healing. The Swift Healing is your main healing skill that has a low cooldown and can be cast up to 3 times. Our healer setup is made to support your team while doing as much damage as possible. But in case if you ever need to, then you can also switch 1 DPS skill for 1 healing skill. And that's about it. So if you enjoyed this video, click like, subscribe, and comment. If you are interested in more content, then check out my channel and I'll see you in the next one. So take it easy, peace!